Right, you mother lovers, this is the last instalment of videos for this laser for now. And we are going to find out together whether it cuts 9mm and 12mm material for templates. Up until now, I haven't tried myself, so we're going to do it together. I'll also go over some other parts that I missed out in the previous videos or got wrong in the previous videos and correct in this video. Let's get on with it. To give you an example, this is pretend that's the top of a table leg. I'd need this mortise cut out, so I'd need to make a template for that. I don't have a mortising machine. And besides, the apron would be raised up higher than that, so I'd then finish off those corners with a chisel. That'd be my rough template. I'd use a guide bush and a router bit to cut that out. Getting those completely dialed in to exactly the measurement you want within 0.2 mil. You can burn through a lot of stock trying to get it right, so I'm hoping the laser's gonna fix that problem. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Bad news, you all. I've been using this for hours and hours, burning away. And according to Xtool, you need to clean this every 30 minutes. 30 minutes is if you're not using air assist, that is. And it's a bit longer if you've been using air assist. 20 watt laser, 10 watt laser, you've got more time between cleans. Obviously, if you're engraving something for an hour, you're not going to stop halfway through it and clean it, are you? You're just going to keep going. I've been using this for hours, days, without cleaning it. As you can see, when I turned it over, it's... It's not beautiful, but I'm going to take it apart, give it a clean. It's just this and this really, the lens. It's cleaner than a clergyman's conscience. Giving it a wipe with a bud anyway. There's no doubt on that. So that all took 10 minutes, so I'd say to clean. Clean the lens and the fans. They say use isopropanol. It took forever, wasn't doing anything, wasn't touching it. I used engine cleaner that I use on my car. Came straight off. Yep, 18 mil. I'm really not hopeful of you. See, got to go through the usual sh shenanigans, folks. I'm doing this so you can see me literally doing this without having tried it first. So let's get a thickness of material sorted out. Marking it, bish, bash. You probably noticed there's no bleeping sound. That was really f***ing annoying. That bleep. I managed to be able to turn it off. So every time you press that button, it doesn't bleep anymore, which is lovely. There we go. Let's add a, let's go rectangle. Let's make it. 25 by 25. Power 100%. I'm going to go with speed as slow as possible. Process start. Now we wait. That's done. Oh dear. Well, it didn't cut through. But boy, did that oh. do some burning, eh? I'm going to have to have a little play with this. Due to some camera technical difficulties, all of the cutting of all the ply in the MDF, all that footage is not usable. Uh, instead of filming it all again, because it was a hell of a lot, I'm just going to explain a lot of it to you and take you through what happened and show you some too. With the 18mm MDF, I tried all different types of speeds and power and passes. And for me, if something's not going to cut something in a couple of passes or a few passes, it's not going to cut the mustard as it were. The MDF, I think I got to 10 passes, it still hadn't cut through uh, and I'd had enough by then. With the ply, I really set the um, speed really low and full power and it burnt the bloody hell out of it. Um, oh shit, look at the state of that. Um, and that was 10 passes. I think the problem with ply is if you've got a void inside the ply and you've got your air assist blowing down in there, you've got a sort of a vortex of oxygen and fire. And you know what happens when you blow on a fire, it flares up, doesn't it? I think that's a similar thing with plywood. So this isn't birch plywood where the layers are usually really good. This is FE plywood, far eastern plywood. Um, so it's soft plies and a hardwood on the outside. Soft in the middle, crunchy on the outside. I'm a dillo. Now, I don't know what X tool say the laser can cut. I bet my bollocks in a barn dance if I looked hard enough, they'd be advertising somewhere that it can cut 18 mil. The X tool S1 cuts through thicker wood in acrylic effortlessly. The 20 watt laser I had that wasn't X tool before, but it was a 20 watt laser, which is half the power of this, also said that it could cut 18 mil and it couldn't cut 3 mil in one pass. That 20 watt laser took, I think, two passes, and even then you had to push the parts out. So, just in case somewhere around on the intervals there's some documentation that says X tool say it can cut 18 mil pine wood, we're going to do that. We're going to try it anyway. 
This time I'm going to use a circle, maybe it's quicker. I'm going to put power to 100. We're going to go two passes. Let's select four for speed. Fingers crossed. Let's try that again, but let's try that with three passes. You're a betting man or woman, what do you reckon? You cut through. Well, to say I wasn't expecting that is an understatement. That's three passes, speed four, power 100. The entry cut is pretty nice and clean, but the exit side is like a ripped out fireplace. But still, not bad, is it? It's 18 mil thick. Couldn't do the MDF at all with 10 passes. If somebody can't cut in 10 passes, it's, I'm not having it. And that first cut though, actually, that's almost through at three passes. Man, I'm... <laughs> Really impressed with this laser. But anyway, I'm not going to be using softwood or hardwood as templates. So let's find out about the 12mm and the 9mm ply and MDF. That's what I'm really interested in. Now, as you know, I've already been through this, so I know what the results are. So I'm not going to f about and do any testing. So this is the 9mm MDF. Remember, it couldn't cut 18mm. I'm going to set the speed to 5. I'm going to go over to. And that's a very nice, clean, perfect cut. 9mm ply, I'm going to power to 100, speed 4, passes 2. So remember the MDF was speed 5, I think. We got a result. Yep. This is the 12mm ply. I remember how difficult it really burnt the hell out of the other piece, didn't it? So I've... The only difference between this and the MDF now is the speed's different. I've gone for a slower speed to 4. What do you reckon, folks? Nice. Now for the most important one. This is what I 12mm I use the most for templates. What do you reckon, guys? That's disappointing. Not. <laughs> Lovely, perfect, clean hole. One that a bushing or a guide bearing is going to be happy to roll around in. Well, I'm over the moon. Two passes for all of them to get a nice, clean cut. You could probably cut the 9mm in one pass, but it's not a very nice, clean, tidy cut. After all that, I'm so pleased it cut the 12mm. I can't think of very many times in my life I've had to use 18 mil for templates for the reason you lose too much depth. The bearing's got to sit on that 18 mil, hasn't it? And uh, you know what I mean when you've made templates. I know this all has this lovely laser for marking out where I think where things are, but so I did this grid anyway because, as far as I can see, having a grid like this is going to be much faster. If you're doing batches of stuff, off you go now, can't you? This will be available either on possibly eBay, possibly my Patreon page, definitely on my Facebook page. If you're interested, it'll be in a Lightburn version and a Extol Creative Space version. The bottle openers will be on my Facebook page if you're interested in purchasing. It'll be 35 quid each, plus shipping. I don't know where you live, so get in touch with me. We can figure that out if you want them. Like I said, they are limited. I didn't put the logo into all of them, so there is a handful of them that are still bare. None of them are the same, so you pick the one you want. You're going to get that one you want with that wood grain that you can see. It's nice in life when you get tools and they do what they say they can do, isn't it? I was very disappointed with that 20 watt laser. I'm very happy with this. I'm sure you will be too. But there's one more thing. What would happen if a router and a laser hooked up? Getting your bushes and router set up properly. Find out what your cutter is. So it's pretty simple really, your router cutter is 18mm, your diameter of your bush is 24, 18 minus 24 which equals 6, divide that by 2 equals 3. Ding. So your 
template that shape for instance you need three mil extra this side three mil extra that side so and three mil extra that side so but you want your end result to be 50 53 56 so that diameter sorry that'd be 56 and whatever your measurements are let's call that 50 for argument's sake that needs to be 53 but there's an added complication when it comes to using a laser we've spoken about this but we'll go through it this is our board i'm going to cut the template out of Pop that in there. Now, remember our measurements are 56 or 53. Okay, let's get that in the middle. Now, it's a fun part. You need to go to this outline, remember. 0.1. Zoom right in now, because you've got to remove something. As we don't want it to cut two lines, we need to get rid of that. Oh, come on, delete that. As we're going to cut it, remember, like our cute kit in school, 100% speed 4 passes 2. Process. Don't forget to head over to my Patreon page to support this channel for the price of a pint once a month. It's pressure free, no obligation, cancel any time, ad free vids, early access to vids, the director's cut, and a WhatsApp group for top tier peeps. I'd like to give a warm welcome to my new patrons, Mark Dana and Steve Harbinson. Thank you. Just realised throughout this whole review, I've forgotten to do my scoring of what I think and feel of the machine. And I'm going to give this a solid 5 out of 5. 5 for build quality, 5 for what it can actually do. Admittedly, the lasering positioning system, that, I think that's very handy for cutting. When you want to engrave, I think the spore board I showed you earlier is a lot more efficient and quicker to be setting up things. The packaging it came in, 5, five for that too. I'm well happy with that machine and I suppose all that's left really is what more can it do? I know it can do all the other things very well. You know, your engraving, your 3D pictures and your, and your tat. Um, some of you are going to hate me for saying that. I have seen some tat out there that um, is pretty impressive and some people even on YouTube gone as far to say it's like worth sold for five grand. <laughs> Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's difficult to swallow or believe that something machine made like that could be worth that much money. It's hard enough trying to sell handmade products for the value that they're worth and for somebody to say something cut by machines going to command a higher price than it would be if it was done by hand is ridiculous but hey if that's the case it's the case isn't it what can i say but i highly recommend it really good i love the fact it's an enclosed machine not a gantry type open one where you've got to build an enclosure you need an enclosure really but let's say your niece wants to walk in the chances of her having on some protective goggles and she's going to look straight at that laser isn't she like everyone would if they saw a bright light out in the corner of their eye and then it's going to damage their eyes not to mention that sealing it in keeps the fumes out yeah i highly recommend it if you're looking for a laser and you're in the market for one i definitely recommend you get that one with the riser base though <laughs>